Hi F1 family, we're missing you. Welcome to At Home with Sky F1. Now, they've asked me to choose my favourite four features from the last eight years of Sky F1. Now, that is a lot of features to choose from, probably about 15, 1600, but I think I've done it. My first one, ice racing with Kimi Raikkonen. My second, a rookie's feature from 2013 on the beach in Melbourne. My third, a Monaco one, it is jet skiing with Lewis Hamilton and Nico Rosberg. And my fourth, another one from Monaco, because it is my favorite race. It's mine and Ted's guide to a weekend at the Monaco Grand Prix. So first up, ice racing, Kimi Raikkonen in Russia. If those six words alone don't entice you to watch this, then I don't know what does. We had a lot of fun shooting this feature. To give you a bit of background on it, it was the Friday night, we'd just done the F1 show at Sky HQ, and then we flew through the night. By the time we got to Moscow and landed, with the time difference, we had to go straight to the ice circuit and start racing. So, I'm not making excuses for the fact that I crashed at turn one, but I am, but I'm not, but I am. But I hadn't slept. Kimmy decided to blame it on the fact I was a woman. Nice forward thinking there, Kimmy. Anyway, apart from that single comment, he was on great form. It was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Ah! Oh, whoa, what do I do? Kimmy! <laughs> Raikkonen is one of the most intriguing characters in Formula One. What do we actually know about him? Well, we know he's fast. We know he's a man of few words. We know that he knows what he's doing. Yes, 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 yes. And we now know that he loves driving on ice. I've come all the way to Moscow to see him and Charles Pick race on frozen water and see if I can reveal a bit more about the personality behind the enigmatic Finn. <laughs> How boring is it to drive like this? <laughs> like, they should have made some corners at least. You just constantly accelerate through corners. Yeah, because otherwise you don't get any. It's just sliding if you don't have it. Do you find this quite relaxing? <laughs> yeah. Can we finish with a full spin? Uh, I don't think it's enough power in this one. So. I mean, you can probably do it. Yes! Love it! I want to do it again. I want to drive. Wish me luck. Kimmy, can you just give me three tips about driving on ice? Let's go. What? You cannot serious? do anything wrong. Which gear should I be in? Whatever you want, I don't mind. Oh, come on, Kimmy. <laughs> give me something here. Oh. Whoa. What do I do? Kimmy. <laughs> I didn't go far. <laughs> I love how you just let me crash. Happens often with women and cars, huh? <laughs> we almost made through the first corner. You're supposed to be my teacher. <laughs> Tell me what to do. For sure you will learn on some point when you hit enough me. many times something. Are you serious? Try to point the wheels where you want to go. Just put throttle. If it goes sideways, put the wheels on the way where you want to go and throttle so it should go. <laughs> throttle! Kimmy! Ah. Kimmy! Do something! <laughs> I can't do anything. Whoa, it's really sensitive. Isn't it? <laughs> I don't want to stop. Am I in trouble? Well, I don't know. Never in Russian. You cannot get <laughs> in the in trouble. trouble. <laughs> Have I damaged the car? <laughs> Have I damaged the car? No, it's fine. I think I'm fixed. I think I should probably get out. I think I might be in a bit of trouble. <gasps> I'm really not sure whether to laugh or cry right now. It was good fun. Sorry, Renault. Okay, now it's time for the press conference, which possibly barred from, to be honest. I've just trashed the car. Um, planning to ask Kimmy what it takes to be a decent ice driver. Kimmy, I'm thinking of a career in ice racing. I just uh, wondered what kind of skills you think I need to be a success. Uh, many, many new cars and spare parts, I think. I enjoy my time in, in a team, it's a relaxed team and uh, they have a different way of doing things than many other teams, but still, 
still we, we, we do our best and uh, try to win the races. Charles Pick, Kimmy the Iceman Raikkonen, off the ice, head to head. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Charles, you took the ice man on the ice. That was incredible. It was my first time on the ice, and uh, it was uh, yeah, very, very funny, and uh, I enjoyed it a lot. I've done some ice racing before and it was a rally, so, but uh, it's just a pretty basic course, but it's, I think if the people liked it, it was good. Does it feel a bit like you're home from home here? Because did you have a good connection with the Russians, <laughs> I don't think You both like to drink plenty of vodka, that's for sure. And you've got uh, a I don't, similar I, mindset, maybe. My, not really. I mean, it's different than Finland, obviously. And, uh, but, I mean, it's close at least, so for me it wasn't too difficult to get here. It's, it's cold this in Finland on a, on a, on a winter, but um, I mean, I wouldn't really say that um, probably the best best neighbors. Similar temperature, I suppose. And what about going into the next season? How are you feeling? How confident you are? Are you in the new car? Um, I have no idea, really. I mean, I think we have a good package, but how good it is, uh, we will only see it in the races. and. Uh, we had some small issues with it, but it's pretty normal for the new car, so um, if we can improve where we finished last year, then uh, we will put ourselves in the championship hunt, and uh, that's, that's what we want, but uh, can we do it? Uh, I, I cannot promise anything, we only can uh, try to do our best. You give them away, just give them a little way, just give them a little way. Look at the effect you have on women, it's unbelievable. And I know you've got a flight to get to, so I've just got you one quick no, shot. No, thanks. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? They will drink for oh, sure. Oh, you're Russian friends. Oh, thanks for an amazing day. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Out of ten. the car. How was my driving? Out of ten. Until the first corner, okay. <laughs> So a lot of fun with Kimmy on the ice. Now, a bit of background info on that. The guy from Lotus went absolutely nuts. And actually, you know, you kind of understand it. I'd written off his car and I had a world champion in the front seat who I could have given whiplash to just at the beginning of the start of the season. But when I told him that Kimmy laughed, and by laugh, I mean a proper belly ache, he thought, I've got to see this. And so did loads of you because it got downloaded hundreds of thousands of times on YouTube. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Kimmy. I will never forget our ice racing extravaganza in Russia. OK, my next feature. And this is all about the rookies in 2013. Cast your mind back. Can you remember who they were? There were five of them. I'll tell you. Valtteri Bottas, Guido van der Gaard, Esteban Gutierrez, Max Chilton, and of course, God rest his soul, Jules Bianchi. Now, I love this feature because it was the first time they'd all kind of hung out together. It was a very windy beach in Melbourne. And we asked them to play beach tennis, which was like impossible in the conditions. They were all quite shy, a little bit guarded, but you could tell they were really excited about what lay ahead. This weekend sees five drivers making their Formula One debut. So we thought, what better to get the old competitive juices flowing than a Sky F1 challenge on possibly the windiest day of the year. Anyone for tennis? The inaugural Sky F1 Open began with Guido van der Gaard overcoming his younger rival Valtteri Bottas. And the Dutchman then defeated a valiant effort from our Nats to confirm his progress to the final. An all Mauritia affair fell the way of Max Chilton 7-4. And a second win against Esteban Gutierrez ensured it would be an Anglo-Dutch affair in the final. 
and it was like Interlagos all over again as Caterham and Marussia did battle. The lead changing hands several times, but just like Brazil, it was Caterham who would ultimately prevail. Van der Gaard triumphing 10-7 in the end. Well, I hope your uh, driving's a bit better than your tennis. That was it's actually really hard, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was good fun. So how are you feeling ahead of the weekend? I'm really happy to be here. I mean, uh, I'm not uh, the youngest anymore. At the grand old age of 27, you are the oldest rookie. Yeah. Well, it's like this. I still feel very young. Well, you proved it on the tennis court. Yes, very good. <laughs> now, Esteban, you have been involved with the team for some time now. It must feel like just chomping at the bit to get going. Yes, definitely. After a long time getting to know the team very progressively, it's been, you know, I think the best way to prepare myself for this moment. So now, you know, it's a natural step. And that's how I'm trying to approach it. And you've had plenty of uh, runs in testing, so stands you in good stead? You feeling well prepared? Yeah, I've done a lot of uh, miles over the winter, obviously, because we had the, the problem with the teammate. So for me, it was, it was a benefit. So I feel really comfortable with the car and I can't wait to get going on Friday. Well, obviously, with me, it's been a bit special because I... I knew the, that I will get the seat uh, not not a long time ago, so I could not prepare well the, the season, even if we did uh, two good testing and uh, get me the, the opportunity to know the team. Of course, I think the teammate is the only one, in, uh, at least for me, who you can really compare how, how do you do. And I have a really strong teammate, really really quick. And so I think it will be interesting to see how, how do we do. And Guido, we've seen the high turnover in rookies in this sport. Do you feel a huge amount of pressure or has the pressure come solely from yourself? No, I'm quite relaxed actually. I mean, uh, I know the team. Uh, I just don't know the track. Just for me, it's important to, to learn the track as soon as possible and uh, do a good weekend. And the team is quite fairly, fairly relaxed. We have a car work we have to do during the first few, four races. And then in Barcelona, we'll get a, get a good update. So uh, we'll see where we are. For all of us, it's new, new circuit. So it will be really interesting. And like you said, it, it will change a lot from free practice one to golfing and then again for the race. So there is a lot to take in, but uh, there is a challenge, but that's nice. Well, it's been lovely playing tennis with you. I never played tennis, so I was very happy to make the final. I don't believe him. I Are you? No, no, no. The way how he holds his record is really yeah. impressive. No, he looked like a yeah. professional tennis player. Yeah, he had his eye in. Yeah. You'll be doing that on the, come Sunday. Good luck, guys. Enjoy. Make the most of it. Have fun. Thank you. And thank, thank you for joining you. us. I really enjoyed doing that Ricky feature and I'm sure like me you enjoyed seeing Jules' face and hearing his voice again and also like me did you think about Charles Leclerc they really remind me of each other and I'm sure Jules is looking down on his great friend and godson and feeling very proud of the success that he's having at Ferrari in the sport we all love so much crazy to think of the five of them only Valtteri Bottas is still on the grid okay time for my third favourite feature from my time at Sky F1 and it's in Monaco and it involves the Mercedes boys and a couple of jet skis. Now Simon Lazenby had to go on the back of Lewis Hamilton's jet ski versus Nico Rosberg with me on the back and as you can imagine well this was back when they were still besties but there was a lot of competitiveness and there was a lot of fun. You could see uh, the spirited side of both of them in this feature, I think. I really enjoyed it. This is us jet skiing with the Mercedes drivers. Looks like we're off. So, Nico, you're my chauffeur for the day. Yeah, thank you oh, for that. My chauffeur needs to release the parking brake. It would help. So, how long have you been in Monaco now? For a year now. A year? How's it going? Love it. I was literally bored in Switzerland. And? You've got your teammate as your neighbour as well. Yeah, so sometimes if I don't have food, I just go upstairs and knock on his door. Did Keki have a lot of influence in your younger karting? But did he sort of dictate how you drove? Did he say, well, I did this and I did that? Or did the he last, just... Uh, the last um, advice he gave me was, Nico, when the track is drying out, you need to look for the light grey patches, because those are the dry patches. <laughs> And my reaction to that meant that he never ever gave me any advice anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, the first ever time I drove through this tunnel, I couldn't believe it. It's way tighter than I thought. From what it looks like on TV. I know. It's almost like a personal challenge, isn't it? It's is. like, how soon can I take it flat? Exactly. This here is my way to school. 
which I used to take every single morning. <laughs> and I can see the and school now, just over now, there. Now I drive uh, with 300 with an F1 car, with a silver arrow. <laughs> I always found that turn one was pretty difficult. Oh, it's, it's incredible. It's about, yeah. so tight. Sometimes you commit to the corner, but you're going too far, too deep, and it's too late to turn left. Exactly. And go down the escape road. Yeah. And uh, I had a moment there in 07 in the, in the, on the practice on the Thursday and, and ended up in the barrier. No, I did the same thing. And that's, yeah, and you came flying in pretty much exactly the same thing. I thought, oh, well, if Lewis, if Lewis can do it, then uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be let off, surely. <laughs> I don't think people really appreciate just how difficult it is. It is the hardest Grand Prix. It is the hardest track to, to, to ace. Now, we're going to do a bit of jet ski. Now, you're a jet ski king. I am, yes. She looks good in a wetsuit. Yeah, too bad you're not with her. I know. What you're you're with Simon, you're with him. What, Look at him. Why have I got a dude on the back of me, man? <laughs>
for a couple of hours Such a beautiful day this is the Diamond Presidential Suite and you can't even imagine what it costs per night. The view alone is priceless. The missus is still asleep in the camper van, but there aren't really any places to camp in Monaco, so we're here in the Port Camp Die, which is in France. And for a sweet deal, you can actually park your camper van here and stay for the whole weekend with your friends from Germany. I've got pretzels and, oh, what have we got here? Sausage. And it seems uh, okay. know, quite familiar, that. Glorious food. There are plenty of places to eat in Monaco on a limitless budget, but the place to really be seen is Alain Ducasse's Le Louis XV. Santé. Pardon, madame. Uh, où est le fromage? Cheese is downstairs. Uh, cheese. Ooh, nice. It's on special. Merci, madame. Okay, right, well, I've got my lunch and dinner here and still got change uh, from 10 euros. And why wouldn't you shop at a supermarket with all this lovely fresh produce from the south of France? I'm off to enjoy my produce. Now, there is one downside to Monaco, the logistics. It's so densely populated here that getting from A to B is a total nightmare. But there's also a silver lining to the cloud because you can get around in helicopters. Ah, oh, there you are. Hello. Uh, it's all right. No need to come meet me at the airport. I got the bus. Very uh, convenient and excellent if you're doing Monaco on a budget. Right, now to get around. Another bus. Or just walk. Monaco, think super yachts. There are a few places more glorious in the world to watch the Monaco Grand Prix on than this beauty, Nirvana. Actually, there is a better place to watch the race and all the track action. It's from here, La Roche or The Rock, and it also happens to be the cheapest tickets you can buy for the Monaco Grand Prix, but what a view. I've got my comfy uh, camping chair, I've got my apple juice and a cheese sandwich, lovely. I absolutely loved it. I spent just shy of a million pounds. Well, I didn't actually spend that, but theoretically you would spend it if you followed the route that I took, Ted, far less. A um, little bit of a secret, I'd actually just found out I was pregnant when I did that shoot, which was obviously amazing news, but meant that I couldn't drink any of that gorgeous champagne that was being offered. Anyway, uh, we've loved taking you on this little journey through our favourite features. Uh, stay connected with us at Sky F1. Let us know which features you've particularly enjoyed through the years. Most importantly, stay safe, stay healthy, look after each other. We do miss you. We hope to get the races back on the calendar very soon. I am off to do another boot camp with Wilf and Willow. Kids!